to be honest with you, Sean, I don't know anymore what traditional geospatial data providers is, right? There's just more and more data. We need to provide the world with the option of picking the data that they need when they need it. The ability to mix and match data from different providers, whether they're traditional or non-traditional. The reason Up42 was started was to help to get uh, geospatial data and analytics into the hands of, of more and more people. And we strongly of the belief that if we're able to do this, then we're able to magnify the, the downstream social economic impact of Earth observation data and other kinds of geospatial data. We're very happy to have Up42 in the OGC community. I'm very happy with the energy that we get from the startup world in OGC. Hi everyone and welcome to our, another episode of Looking Up with Up42. My name is Sean Veets, I'm the CEO of Up42 and with me here today I have Dr. Nadine Alema from the OGC. Uh, Nadine is the CEO of the OGC and the OGC is a global standards organization comprising over 500 industry, government and academic members and uh, the OGC has been uh, on a mission to make sure that data is fair, accessible, interoperable and reusable for, for many, many years now. Um, and you know, Up42 obviously is on a, on a mission as well with the Earth observation data and geospatial data with very much the same ideals and principles. And that's why we're very happy to have Nadine with us here today. Welcome, Nadine. Thank you so much, Sean. I'm very excited to be here. I love connecting with our community of global experts. And I love connecting with the startups that are shaping the future of geospatial. So I couldn't ask for a better, better way to start my day. Thanks for having me. Well, I appreciate that. So Nadine, you recently published an article on, uh, in the Geospatial World magazine about the importance of data ecosystems or rather data standards in emerging data ecosystems and to ensure uh, data interoperability. Can you maybe give us a, a short summary and, and, and tell us some of your key points uh, in, from that article? Sure. Um, so I think it's no secret to anybody how fast things are moving these days, right? So new technologies, innovations, startups, applications, and they're all now touching geospatial. So I'm very uh, thankful that everybody's finally recognizing the value of location of geospatial. So the article, Sean, had uh, two main points. The first one is it was really a way to celebrate this opportunity that we as geospatial experts um, um, can bring our expertise to the world um, and our power of integrating information with this glue that is location and where things are. So that's a celebration. And the emphasis is on integrating. So I'm very happy to be here with you, Sean, because as Up42, I'm sure you would agree with me that the future is about data integration. It's about being able to make sense of all this information that's you know almost overload of data sets. So to be able to uh, do this integration at scale and repeatedly, we need standards. So that was the second point of the article standards as the glue for this future of integration in a world of information and standards to allow everybody to break out of their own what i call bubble thanks nadine so can you tell me a little bit about what you think about the role of traditional geospatial players uh, versus new startups like up 42 and how these might differ in terms of standards development Mm, to be honest with you, Sean, I don't know anymore what traditional geospatial data <laughs> providers is, right? Uh, I mean, there's just more and more data. I, I look at uh, SpaceX, uh, who set a new world record, right, on January 24 of, uh, you know, what, what was it? Uh, the number of satellites deployed in a single rocket. It was like 143, you know, small sats on January 24, world record. And those satellites are collecting terabytes and terabytes of information. And we're talking daily, right? And, and Sean, I know you would perfectly agree with me that when it comes down to data, there's no one size fits all, right? So we really need a way to sort out through this data to determine what we need 
and when we need it. And this is the value uh, to me of platforms like Up42. This is exactly to me where Up42 comes in because we have to, as a community, right, provide customers the world. I call it the world because everybody is a customer now. We need to provide the world with the option of uh, picking the data that they need when they need it, the ability to mix and match data from different providers, whether they're traditional or non-traditional, right? Um, and uh, I'm happy that at OGC we're playing a role because we have the, the foundations of the standards of new space, we call it the new space. We, have, we play a role in enabling platforms like Up42 to provide this uh, capability to the world. So I see uh, uh, the mixing and matching for the integration, just making it easier for not just the geospatial experts, but also the non-experts, right? Anybody to be able to use the data. Again, I go back to we're both helping everybody break out of their bubble. And in this case, the geospatial data break out of its bubble to be useful. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. And it's something I can definitely resonate with on many levels. I mean, the, the reason Up42 was started was to help to get uh, geospatial data and analytics into the hands of, of more and more people. I and mean, we strongly of the belief that if we're able to do this, then we're able to magnify the, the downstream social economic impact of both observation data and other kinds of geospatial data. Um, and this is something that we see in our own work as well. I mean, obviously, when we're integrating new data sources, it's way easier for us to bring in new data sources uh, that already have platforms that support uh, standards. Uh, then, you know, it's very easy for us to bring things in. But where we see that people are not yet using the standards, our role right now is helping to bridge that gap and helping to make that data available in the format by which it can be then used further downstream, um, either directly in applications or by, by the algorithms on the Up42 marketplace. Um, it's very interesting what you said, though, as well, about people needing the data at the level at which they, they they need to use it, right? And this is the other thing that a lot of people don't always understand. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, uh, noise in the industry, or, or rather, push in the industry right now for analytics-ready data, and, and that's great. Obviously, that's the that's the, the 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 main thing that people need to be able to process further down the chain. But for many applications, people actually need the raw data further upstream, and they need to do their own processing. Um, so what we're trying to make sure of is that we're able to provide not only the analytics-ready data or the ready-to-consume data but also the option for those who are maybe more advanced uh, to be able to get access to the raw information and process it the way that they need to. So, so certainly uh, standards play a role also in these different levels of, of processing. Um, I wanted to, to touch on one point from your article. You, you asked in the article that, that everyone in the geospatial arena should take part in standards development, including end users. Um, now, for me, it's, it's easy to imagine how companies that are building products and who are pushing their own data or their own algorithms, their own solutions, um, or, or even their own integration services can get involved in standards developments. But, but maybe you can tell us a bit more about what you had in mind uh, from, from an end user perspective. Um, I love this question, Sean, because uh, the more I think about it, right, standards are not just, the, they're not the end goal, right? We're, we're not just developing standards. It's more about the community getting together and the standards are sort of one of the outcomes of this community working together so that they can integrate the data for all the amazing applications they have in mind. So I would definitely, as you know, one of my messages here is to urge, that's what I did in the article, to urge everyone to actually get involved. Um, everyone, I'm not saying just like a product developers and users, but also geospatial and non-geospatial because, you know, those, those, this data and those tools and processes are being used outside and everywhere. So if we, so if we agree that standards um, are the way to make sense of this growing amount of data and opportunities out there, then we have to agree that the more voices are represented in the, in the community, in the process, then the more broadly useful what we develop together will be. And most importantly, the faster we will get a standard out there because we have the right people at the table. 
And so from, from our end, and because of that, uh, you see in OGC's um, uh, messaging these days, an emphasis on implementer friendly standards. So um, nice. uh, exactly. And in the case of the OGC APIs, which are the building blocks you know, for the future of location, we're really working directly with the developers. We're starting from the ground up, how you do the maps and the tiles and the records and the processes. And uh, one more point, if you allow me, it's that I, I keep going back to standards don't create themselves. It's not magic, right? That's why we need the user with the requirement, the decision maker with the problem, and the product providers and the data providers and the process providers uh, they have to come together uh, to make the integration just less painful right so the use cases the demonstration of interoperability writing reusable code or building blocks eventually i think everything flows when the community gets together and you cannot have just a community of product developers and a community of end users <laughs> they have yeah. to talk together and that's to me that's that's OGC great thank you so um, I, I wanted to just sort of give an analogy here and then follow with a question um, I, I only have one personal experience of contributing to to uh, standards and this was with a different standards organization uh, for the development of SVG standards at some point and one observation that I had during that process was that the um, the, the standards development was quite far behind where the industry was. Um, and so my question to you is, what is the current state of play in terms of the balance of, of how industry is progressing versus standards development? And how do you, how do you make sure that you stay as close to uh, the development of the industry as possible? How do you make sure that the standards are developing quickly? So the current state of play, I think, is honestly is one of um, inspiration and community power. I'm, I'm very optimistic because speaking of power, this community of geospatial experts actually grew over the pandemic years, right? You know, 2020 and 2021. And that's because uh, the solution relied on data integration. I have to go back to that. So data integration was not a luxury, right? Uh, it was critical, critical, critical to getting the answers that we're looking for. Um, it's critical in defense just as much as it's critical in new space, just as much as it's critical in health. So from that perspective, I think there's this, um, uh, I think we've matured over the years that there's the realization that if we actually work together, right, we can get things out faster together. And what we are competing on is not at the standards level. The standards is just the foundation so that we can thrive, whether thrive on competition or thrive on innovation, right? And with that in mind, I think I, I appreciate you sharing your experience because Traditionally, I think standards development was let's get together and standardize what we've done. And these days, you know, we're, we're standardizing what we're doing today and what we have to do tomorrow. So there's, I call it an integrated approach to standards and innovation today that uh, uh, manifests itself in OGC by, uh, again, going from the ground up so that the implementer developer friendly and then through our innovation program so we get to experiment with the user and with the um with the providers uh, and essentially the documentation of the experimentation becomes the seed for the standard and that's how we can keep up uh, we don't yeah we don't have that luxury anymore and honestly this is this is way more useful as a community so uh, I'm happy with the progress being made uh, so far, and uh, I think uh, changing this approach to keep pace with innovation, to expand the footprint of geospatial everywhere, it's sort of making sense, and we are at the right time. Oh, that's great. It sounds like the, uh, like the, the approach is, is really turning into a more uh, iterative and collaborative approach than it perhaps has been in the past. So that, that's really great. Um, so Nadine, thank you. Thank you so much for, for all of your insights. Um, just by way of summary, 
um, you know, from, from the discussion, you know, what we've really highlighted is the importance of standards in helping people to integrate different data sources and being able to extract value from those data sources at scale across different providers, across different use cases. And what I really liked about the discussion is how inclusive you made it in terms of you know inviting everyone to participate in in the standards development regardless of where you sit in the value chain and i think that's very important as well um you know the i've, I've been working with geospatial uh, for more than 20 years now the ogc has always been sort of uh a part of 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 um my journey i would say and i've always encouraged my other companies that i've worked for to to be part of the ogc and you know specifically because the goals of the ogc are so close to the the goals of 42 um, you know, being a developer marketplace and, and a platform that brings together data and analytics. I'm very happy today to also announce that, you know, Up42 has joined the OGC and looking forward to uh, to helping to uh, helping to helping the OGC to push on the mission of of uh, fair, uh, fair data, uh, findable, accessible, interoperable and, and reusable. So thank you very much, Nadine. Thank you so much, Sean. We're very happy to have Up42 in the OGC community. I'm very happy with the energy that we get from the startup world in OGC. And I would uh, just encourage everybody to uh, stay up to date because this community is doing amazing things with amazing impacts, positive impacts on the world. So thank you again for having me and thank you for your nice words uh, about OGC. Thank you very much, Nadine. Thanks for being here with us today on this week's episode of Looking Up with Up42. If anyone would like to find out more information about the OGC, please visit ogc.org. Uh, and you can find out more information about Up42 at up42.com. Thank you very much.